I didn't know how involved I would get at the time, but I at least wanted to read a couple of books and see exactly you know, how bad this, this could be because my experience with talking to these guys had been a pleasant one. 32-year-old Brian Calkin grew up near Boston and graduated from Skidmore College. In 2007, he embarked on a spiritual journey, which drew him to Scientology. In the summer of 2009, he paid $80,000 in advance for a Scientology counseling program in Clearwater and booked his flight. And I flew into Tampa, and I was told by Charlie Bills, who was um, my rep, that I was going to be picked up by a flag bus, and basically I grab my bags and I go out to the curb, and there'll be a bus waiting for me, and you'll know it'll say flag on the side. And I was waiting for my luggage, and all of a sudden I hear someone say, um, hi, Brian, or something like that. You know, hey, Brian. And I turned around, and I, I was first shocked that someone knew who I was, you know? Um, and it was two people from CMO, Commoners Messengers Organization, from, a super, from the Superpower Project. And I was said, oh, okay. So they said, we're here to pick you up. On the car ride over to Flag, it was, you know, instantly involved in my first um, registration cycle or reg cycle for donations to the Superpower Project. And I remember being in the car and being like, you know, I'm not really ready to donate any money. They were trying to get me to donate uh, to be a cornerstone, which is $35,000, I think, or $30,000. And I said, um, and a cornerstone is a status level that you have to do that. I said, you know, I don't think I'm ready to do that. And I was fairly adamant, you know, at first about not doing it. And then eventually um, I decided in the car ride over that I would donate a few thousand dollars to the project I remember quite definitively the franticness when I gave her my credit card for her to run it in the car. Well, first of all, I remembered her asking me to run the credit card in the car. And I thought that was just bizarre. I said, you want to run my credit card now for this few thousand dollars? And she said, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, we have this thing where we have to, our weekends Thursday at 2, we have to get all of our donations in by that time. So I, you know, I kind of was like, all right, okay. It's still a little weird, but sure. And the minute I pulled up to the Fort Harrison Hotel where I was staying, and I stayed there for several months, there was a person waiting there for me to collect my money to finish my accommodations. So there was somebody like instantly waiting there. Like I remember opening the door, and, some, and they actually had called the, pre the person driving to see where we were, you know, and we, we probably showed up at like 155 or something like that. And then somebody was like at the door, they opened the, van, the, the car door and the guy was like, you know, you Brian, I need the money for the accommodation. And I was like, what the hell is going on to this place? And then immediately, you know, after I signed in and um, I had a, I believe an ethics interview, which everyone does when they go to flag at first, I was instantly brought into, um, to meet Dave Foster, who's one of the flag regs. And I, you know, he instantly regged me for, to pay for my whole bridge, you know, which had been in like an additional, you know, $150,000 or something like that. So it was like, you know, the first day it was like, boom, boom, boom. You know, at first it was, it was annoying basically, you know, but then it got to the point where it was like really affecting me and the fact that I was like not feeling, you know, safe, you know, at the place. It was like every time I walked out of the auditing room, it was like people looking for money for me. It was quite ridiculous. After a session one day, my auditor, Nina Palmer, who was a class 12, um, you know, we sat down after the session and she said, you know, Brian, I really think that you should do, you know, your patron, it's like, you know, you're, she really was like kind of laying on the, the compliments, you know, you're so young and you're so successful and, you know, this is such an important thing to do. And, and I said, yeah, you know, I, I think it is an important thing to do, but I don't think, you know, I just spent a lot of money on my L's and I don't think I'm really quite ready to you know, do that kind of financial commitment right now. You know, she was looking for $50,000. I said, I'm not really ready for that, you know? And she, and, you know, she really wouldn't back off. You know, she really, we were 10 minutes going back and forth. And I remember, I slow, like in that conversation, because you know, for me it's like, you know, in the auditor relationship, you really look up to these people. I was amazed at this really strong intention these people had where they could just, you know, sit someone down in the room and say, listen, you're going to give us 50 grand. We need it to, you know, stave off the destruction that this planet's heading on to, you know, very shortly. The church said ministers soliciting donations from their congregation is not only appropriate, 
It is a constitutionally protected form of religious activity. The church also confirmed that Calkin made multiple donations while in Clearwater, but said, Fundraising at Flag is done in accordance with church policy and in a respectful and professional manner. Calkin says he spent $320,000 during his year in Scientology. He remained at Scientology's Flag land base in Clearwater for seven months. He left in February 2010, weary of being pressured for money. Today, he teaches yoga and works as a business consultant. Reporting with Joe Childs and Tom Tobin, this is Maurice Rivenbark for the St. Petersburg Times.